how to create your own PyHole VPN server on a Linux VPS using DigitalOcean's one-click droplet installation. In this video, I'll take you through the complete process of setting up your PyHole VPN server. DigitalOcean is a cloud hosting provider, and we will be using one of their services called Droplets to set up and install our PyHole VPN server on. Droplets are simply what DigitalOcean calls its virtual private servers, or VPSs, also known as cloud servers. After we have set up our DigitalOcean droplet and installed the PyHole VPN server, the next thing we'll be doing is installing the WireGuard VPN client on our local device. The WireGuard VPN client will be used to connect to our PyHole VPN server so that we can use our PyHole VPN. We'll also be installing an SSH client called Putty. Putty allows us to log into our DigitalOcean droplet and allows us to generate PyHole VPN client configurations, which we then add as a tunnel to our WireGuard client. Once we've done that, we simply activate our VPN and our VPN should be working as expected. We'll then check if our VPN is working by navigating to the following website, whatismyipaddress.com, and we'll be looking for where it says IPv4 and that IP address should match the IP address of our DigitalOcean droplet that we have the PyHole VPN server installed on. So the first thing we need to do is navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link for DigitalOcean and it will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out their servers free for 60 days. I'll put this referral link in the video description below. Once you're here, you'll want to create a free DigitalOcean account by filling in the email address field, picking a password, and then clicking on create free account. You can also sign up with Google or your GitHub account. Now I already have a DigitalOcean account, so I'm just going to navigate to the top right hand corner and click on sign in. Once you have created and signed into your DigitalOcean account, you'll be taken to the DigitalOcean dashboard. At the top right hand corner, you should see your $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits if you created a DigitalOcean account using my referral link. Once you're here, hover over the create button and click on it. Once you've done that, at the very top of the drop down list, you should see the DigitalOcean service called Droplets, which allows you to create cloud servers. Click on Droplets. You'll then be taken to the Droplet creation page, where you'll first need to start off by picking a region. For this video demonstration, I'm going to be going with Sydney, so I'm just going to click on it to select it. Once you've chosen your region, scroll down until you see where it says choose an image. Underneath image, you'll be in the OS tab. However, we want the Marketplace tab. Click on Marketplace. Once the Marketplace loads, you should see a search box where you can search for keywords. Simply click on this box and then type pi dash hole. You should then see the Marketplace app called called PyHole VPN, which is an on-demand open source VPN focused on privacy and security. Click on PyHole VPN to select it. Once you've selected the PyHole VPN app, scroll down until you see where it says choose size. You have two droplet types, shared CPU and dedicated CPU. If you're just creating a PyHole VPN server for you and a few other devices, then shared CPU should be more than enough. Click on basic to select the shared CPU. Once you've done that, scroll down until you see where it says CPU options. You have three types of CPU options regular, which has a disk type of SSD, and two other premium CPUs, one is Intel or one is AMD, and both come with disk types of NVMe SSDs. For your PyHole VPN server, you can go with the regular CPU, it should be more than enough. You'll then need to pick a plan. You can click on show all plans if you want to see all the plans available. However, the $6 a month plan, if you're just setting it up for yourself and a few other devices, should be more than enough. So I'm going to select the $6 a month plan, which gives me one gigabyte of RAM, one CPU, 25 gigabytes SSD disk space, and 1000 gigabytes or one terabyte of bandwidth. Once you've chosen your plan, scroll down until you see where it says choose authentication method. Select password if it already isn't selected, and then under where it says create root password, you'll need to type in a root password for your DigitalOcean droplet. So I'm just going to choose one now. Once you have met all the password requirements, scroll all the way down to where you see where it says host name. Host name is just a name for your droplet, so I'm just going to click on this text box here, delete the pre-typed information information in here and then enter a droplet name. So I'm going to call my droplet pi-hole-vpn. Once you've given your droplet a name, click on create droplet. Your digital ocean droplet will then begin installing the pi-hole VPN server. While that's installing, I'm going to open up another tab and navigate to the following URL address wireguard.com slash install slash. Once you're here, you'll be on the WireGuard VPN client installation page. Here, you'll need to select an appropriate client for your device that you're going to be using the PyHole VPN on. You have a number of operating systems. At the top, you have Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu, Android, iOS, 
and many other Linux operating systems. So if you have Android, you just simply open up the Google Play Store on your Android device and download the WireGuard client. Similarly, for iOS or iPhone, just simply open up the App Store and download the WireGuard client. Now I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be downloading the Windows installer. So I'm just going to click on Download Windows Installer here to download the WireGuard client. Now I'll need to install WireGuard, so I'm just going to navigate to the top right-hand corner of my browser to my downloads. I'm going to click on Downloads, and then I'm going to click on the WireGuard installer. Installer.exe. If you're on Windows like myself, you'll be greeted with the user account control, which asks you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You have two options, no or yes. I'm going to click on yes, as I want to install the WireGuard VPN client. The WireGuard client will then begin installing. Once the WireGuard client has been installed, the client will immediately open. Minimize the WireGuard VPN client for the time being. Now I'll need to check on our digital ocean droplet and see if it has finished setting up. And as you can see, by the green active status symbol to the left of our droplet, it is indeed active active and running. To the right of our droplet's name, you can see our droplet's IP address. And if we go to the right of our droplet's IP address, we can see the word copy. Click on the word copy to copy this IP address. Next, you'll need to open up another tab and navigate to putty.org. Once here, click on download putty. Now putty is the SSH client that we're going to be using to log into our digital ocean droplet via the SSH protocol. Putty is available on only these listed OSs. If you're on an operating system that isn't listed here, you'll need to use an alternative SSH client. I'm on Windows, so I'll be installing the Windows installer 64-bit x86. Now I won't be going through the installation of Putty in this video, as I already have uploaded a full video on how to download, install, and use Putty. If you would like to watch that video, I'll put it in the video description below and as a card at the top right-hand corner of this video for your convenience. Once you've installed Putty or an alternative SSH client that works with your operating system, minimize your browser. You'll then be taken to your desktop, and as you can see, I've got the Putty shortcut here on my desktop. If you don't see the Putty shortcut on your desktop, just navigate to where it says search on your taskbar and search for Putty and then open up the Putty app or program. I'm going to open up Putty by simply double clicking on the shortcut. Under where it says host name or IP address, you'll need to paste in the copied IP address of your digital ocean droplet. Once you've pasted that in, to the right hand side, the port should be 22, leave that as it is, and the connection type should be SSH, leave that as it is. All that's left to do now is to click on open. You'll then be greeted with the following Putty security alert. The server's host key is not cached in the registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. Now this is a normal Putty security alert as it is the first time you are connecting to your digital ocean droplet that you just created. So you have three options. You can either cancel, connect once or accept. If you click on accept, you will add the host key to the putty cache and carry on with the connection. So I'm just going to click on accept now. Once done, maximize your putty terminal window. At the very top, it says login as. We're going to be logging in as root. So type the word root and then hit enter. The password is simply going to be your digital ocean root password that you chose when you were creating your digital ocean droplet. Type that in and then hit hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then be logged into your digital ocean droplet and the Pi-hole VPN will immediately generate two QR codes that you can scan with a WireGuard compatible client. The scan feature is typically for mobile devices. Now, if you're on a desktop like myself, these two QR codes, the DNS only VPN and the full VPN are not very useful for you as you won't be able to use them to connect to your Pi-hole VPN. Instead, what you'll need to do is type the following command dot slash regen dash VPN dash keys Dot sh. This will then generate new Pi-hole VPN configurations that you can then add to your WireGuard client. Now, if you wanted to generate multiple configuration files for multiple devices, all you would do is type an extra space on this command and then a number for the specific amount of devices. So if you have five devices and would like five new WireGuard configuration files, then type the number five. If you have two, it would be two, etc., etc. Now I'm just going to generate only one new Pi hole configuration for my WireGuard client. So I'm just going to delete the number and the space. If you also want to do the same, remember you'll need to type dot slash regen dash VPN dash keys dot SH. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. And as you can see, two more QR codes are generated and underneath each QR code, so for example, underneath the DNS only VPN, you now have the WireGuard configuration information from where it says interface to all the way to where it says allowed IPs. And for the full VPN too, you have the QR code and then the WireGuard client configuration information. Now for me, I'm not so interested in the DNS only VPN. I'm more interested in the full VPN. So if you want to add the full VPN to your WireGuard VPN client, simply copy from where it says interface 
all the way down to where it says allowed IPs. You simply highlight all that text and it will automatically be copied to your clipboard. Now you can just minimize your putty terminal window. Once you've done that, open up your WireGuard client that you minimized earlier and then navigate to where it says add tunnel and click on the arrow to the right hand side of add tunnel. Once you've done that, click on add empty tunnel. In this text box here, delete all the pre-filled information and then right click in the white text box here and paste in your Pi-hole VPN configuration information that you copied from your putty terminal. What you'll need to do now is give your new tunnel a name. So I'm going to call it pi-hole-vpn-sydney, which is the digital ocean region for our VPN. Once you've chosen a name, click on save. The VPN tunnel will then be added to your WireGuard client. To turn on your new Pi-Hole VPN, simply click on the activate button. You should then see a status of active. Now we can check if our Pi-Hole VPN is working correctly by opening up our browser and navigating to the following URL address. What is my IP address.com? Once you've typed this in, hit enter to navigate to that website. Under where it says my IP address and for IPv4, you should then see your digital ocean droplets IP address. If this is the case, so my IP address is 170.64.148.11. And if we go back to our digital ocean droplet list and look at our Pi-hole VPN droplet, you can see that our IP address is 170.64.148.11, which is exactly the same as what's displayed in whatismyipaddress.com. If you look to the right hand side, you can see a map location for that IP address. And below, you can see the IP information, which says ISP Digital Ocean, City Sydney, and the country is Australia in New South Wales. All this information confirms that our VPN is turned on and is working as expected. All right, so that pretty much concludes the video on how to create your own Pi-hole VPN server on our Linux VPS using DigitalOcean's one-click droplet installation. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video.